Now today I want to talk to you about the C word. Get your minds out of the gutter, I'm talking about copper grease. Copper slip, copper ease, copper paste, whatever you want to call it. The generic term for it is copper grease because it looks a bit like grease with copper in it. Although strictly speaking, it's not a grease, it's an anti-seize compound. Now, I never expected to be making a video about this product. It's been a mandatory piece of equipment in every mechanic's toolbox for about the last hundred years, although recently it's come under fire. I'm going to explain why in a couple of minutes, but first of all, I want to tell you a little story. Bear with me. Now, in 1988, there was a junior health minister in the Conservative government called Edwina Curry. Edwina had already gained a bit of a reputation. She was a bit of a loose cannon and had a penchant for making really stupid remarks. Now, to me, it always seemed as though she was one of those personalities that just had to be in the limelight. And she discovered fairly early in life that a surefire way of getting media attention was to make really outlandish and outspoken remarks, often at the expense of others, and it worked. Now, in December 1988, Edwina had had sight of a particular report regarding eggs, with a population of around 52 million people in the UK. As a nation, we were consuming 30 million eggs a day. There was a huge UK egg producing industry, but at the rate we were consuming eggs, it couldn't quite keep up with demand, so we were importing eggs. And it was discovered that among those imported eggs, there was an above average incidence of salmonella infection. Now, Edwina saw an opportunity in this report, and she took the words eggs, salmonella, infection, and she ran with it publicly. She told the whole nation that all eggs were infected with salmonella. This caused a public panic. Overnight, egg sales fell by 60%. Supermarkets removed eggs from the shelves, and the UK egg producing industry fell to its knees. Companies went bankrupt, lives within the industry were destroyed, and four million hens also had to be destroyed. Now, back in those days, the only way we could gather news was through the newspapers, TV, and radio. And it didn't matter which of those you turned to. For about two weeks at the beginning of that December, Edwina Curry was the headline news on every article. The government had to pay out millions of pounds in compensation to the industry. Edwina was forced to resign and the UK egg industry never recovered. In fact, egg consumption in this country wasn't to see those initial figures until some 30 years later when in 2017 the government had to release an official statement saying that eggs are safe to eat. Now Edwina of course didn't care about the trouble she caused. She got exactly what she wanted. She used that incident to build an entire career as an author and as a pointless TV celebrity. Now with the advent of the internet over the last 20 years or so, we've seen this kind of behavior increase exponentially. The pseudo-scientists, the armchair experts, the Edwinas of this world have become affectionately known as internet trolls. Protected by false identities, safe in the knowledge that no one can trace where they live, they sit under their favorite bridges, phone or keyboard in hand, waiting for some unsuspecting person in his quest for knowledge to come trip trapping across their bridge. Before the guy can even complete his comment and press send, these trolls pounce. Sometimes on their own and sometimes in packs. And the poor guy doesn't know what's hit him as they tear his comment to pieces and tell him that he's totally and utterly wrong. Like Edwina, these people cherry-pick pieces of information from any given subject. They invent non-existent evidence to go along with what they're saying, and they omit information which might negate the point they're trying to make. And before we know where we are, there are ridiculous myths floating around on the forums and on our beloved Facebook, based on misinformation and overinflated egos. You see it in all walks of life. But a few weeks ago, after publishing a video where I had the barefaced temerity 
to mention copper grease, I was attacked from all directions. My email inbox was full. I was attacked and insulted from Facebook and the bad language filter on my YouTube channel caught and quarantined numerous critical comments. Now by and large these comments came from people who I suspect in some cases were just victims of the propaganda but others made me chuckle mainly because of the glaring holes in the information that they were putting forward. Now I want to make it clear from the start I'm not making this video to persuade you to use copper grease if you don't want to use it. I'm making this video purely and simply to fill in the gaps left by the propaganda that's been fed to you. If you like, just to put the record straight. Now among these messages, I was sent links to articles on the internet, which actually weren't articles at all. There were adverts for other products. Links to videos on YouTube, demonstrating the evil nature of copper grease using practical demonstrations which were obviously set up with the intention of making them fail complete with some off-camera jiggery pokery to make sure it looked as bad as it possibly could and i had to have a little chuckle to myself because i'd expected this and i'd already made preparations now i've been aware of this controversy about copper grease for several years and i had already done a lot of research into the subject just to make sure that i wasn't wrong and after doing that i've been quite happy to continue using it because there are some huge and glaring holes in the reasons that are peddled to us for not using it now the first thing that you'll be told is not to use copper grease anywhere near braking systems. I've been using it for 30 something years where its application is relevant and I've never had a problem. I also know many other people that have done the same and they've never had a problem. So I did some investigation to see where the origins of this myth lie and this is what I found. Now at least a couple of decades ago brake pad manufacturers realised that they were missing out on a sales opportunity. Brake pads on brake discs squealed. It was annoying and it was alarming, but there was a really easy, cheap and simple fix for this problem. A small amount of copper grease smeared on the back of the pads. Now there was a sales opportunity here that these pad manufacturers were missing out on. They wanted a piece of the pie. So they created self-adhesive anti-squeal brake shims and no one bought them. Why? Because they cost between five and 10 pounds per wheel and copper grease cost about a penny. And people were already using the anti-seize properties of copper grease to treat other parts of the braking system. They already had it, so why change? Okay, so that didn't work out. So what these manufacturers did next is they started building the pads with anti-squeal shims incorporated into them. It still made the pads substantially more expensive, but now the choice of using them or not had been taken away from the customer. He had to have the pads, end of story. Now taking it a step further, pad manufacturers decided that they wanted even more from this. They wanted to expand the revenue streams. Now selling their own copper grease wouldn't work. The market's already flooded with copper grease and it's cheap. It's not going to make you an awful lot of money. So they created new types of brake lubricant that didn't contain copper. They were different. Now I'm sure that they are really good, but they're also more expensive than copper grease. The introduction of the built-in anti-squeal shims meant that the customer's reliance on copper grease had already been substantially reduced. And I would imagine that these pad manufacturers never looked back. Now a lot of the links on articles saying that you shouldn't use copper grease on brakes actually turned out to be adverts, adverts selling alternative product. Now I accept that you shouldn't use copper grease on the back of pads that have anti-squeal shims fitted. So let's take that out of the equation before we go any further. However, there can still be a benefit to using it on conventional pads and they do exist. Now by and large, what these manufacturers say in these adverts is that they don't recommend the use of copper grease. Why don't they recommend it? Well, because of course, they don't make it. A recommendation is not a warning, it's just a recommendation. What they are actually recommending is that you use their brake lubricant. 
And I think this is where the myth started. People come away from reading those adverts with the impression that copper grease is a bad thing to use as an anti-seize compound in braking systems. Now, some of these adverts take it a step further. Now, this is a slightly underhand, but very successful tried and tested sales technique. And the phrase galvanic corrosion comes into play. And this is basically an electrochemical reaction that can occur between pure copper and aluminium, whereby the aluminium is corroded. And the inference and I say inference because they don't directly state that using copper grease will cause galvanic corrosion, but the inference is that copper grease can create galvanic corrosion. It's interesting because if you read these adverts carefully, they infer by association. They don't state directly that that is what will happen. But your average reader will come away with the comprehension that that is what will happen. So this myth has now grown to the point where we're led to believe that if you put copper grease on anything that's aluminium, it will turn to dust and fall apart right in front of your eyes. I'm telling you now that doesn't happen. And there are several reasons for that. One thing that they leave out is that in order for galvanic corrosion to take place, there needs to be an electrolyte present. And the most common electrolyte that's likely to cause this would be salt water. But hang on a minute, doesn't salt water corrode aluminium anyway? Okay, put that to one side. Now engineers have known about galvanic corrosion for centuries. It's not a new thing that we've just discovered. We've known about it for a long time. But it doesn't only occur between copper and aluminium. It also occurs between stainless steel and aluminium and between any other type of steel and aluminium. Yet our brake calipers are held together with steel fasteners and pins. Okay, these fasteners are generally coated with zinc, which slows down that reaction, but it doesn't stop it completely. Can you see where this story is starting to fall apart a bit? Now, I've spoken to quite a few manufacturers of these copper grease products, all of whom recommend that they're suitable for use on brake components. And although the formulation of these products is a closely guarded secret, I was able to glean some information which also turns these theories on the heads a little bit. For a start, the copper used is not pure copper. It's a specific copper alloy which is designed to give the desirable qualities that these manufacturers require. They also add into the mix chemicals which waterproof and chemicals which are known corrosion inhibitors. After all, what is the point of making an anti-corrosion, anti-seize compound if it does exactly the opposite of what it's made to do? Now, supposing it was pure copper, or at least it was a copper in a state that could cause galvanic corrosion in the presence of an electrolyte. When applied, this copper grease forms an airtight barrier between the two metals which is also waterproof. It keeps the water out. So that salt water can't get between those two metals and cause that reaction. Now, reputable companies that make these products design and formulate them in multi-million pound research centers using decades of knowledge and experience by people that are far more intelligent than your average internet troll. They have multi-million pound reputations to preserve and they're not going to sell you a product that does the exact opposite of what they say it will do. Now, as luck would have it, while I was working on the T100's brakes this last few weeks, I discovered something. For some reason, I don't know why, somewhere in the dim and distant past, the front brakes had had copper grease applied to the pads and some of the components of the brake. They're a standard steel backed pad and judging by the condition of them I would say that they were treated in this way not long after the bike had been registered. Now you could still see traces of this copper grease left on the back of these pads and although they weren't in perfect condition they were remarkably preserved. This is what copper grease does. Now by stark contrast the rear pads had had no such treatment. And I think the corrosion caused through them not being protected is clearly evident. Now, contrary to what some people say, 
less is more with copper grease it needs to be smeared on your work very thinly you do not put it on like butter on a biscuit a layer microns thick is all that is required all you need to do is give the part a coloring with this stuff and it will do its job putting too much of this stuff on like any other lubricant can cause problems be aware of that seized fasteners and brakes are at best a major headache and at worst they can be downright dangerous either way they're nearly always very costly to rectify and all I would say to anyone who wants to challenge the additional information that I've put forward today make sure you can back it up before you leave a comment once again thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and that you found it useful if you have please leave a like and subscribe to the channel i will of course be back next week so until then ride safely and i'll see you soon